Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mogi Beth, and for those of y'all who are new here, I own a six-figure reselling business selling primarily women's clothing on places like Poshmark and eBay. And in today's video, we are doing another 10 brands that I no longer pick up at the thrift store anymore. These are brands that I used to love finding, but now when I come across them, I almost never pick them up. Of course, there are some exceptions to each one, and so we're gonna go over those exceptions. We're also gonna go over the average sales price based off of recent sold comps on Poshmark. But really, the thing about almost all of these brands that makes me never really wanna pick them up is that they have an incredibly low sell-through rate, which means that it takes a really long time for them to sell. So even if they do sell for a pretty good price, they're not in super high demand and they're in high supply on places like Poshmark and eBay. So without further ado, let's jump into the 10 brands. Before we jump into it, I have done this video before, so I'll link that up on the screen in case you want to check that out as well. But okay, number one, this is the brand that really made me want to make another one of these videos because I used to love selling this brand, but nowadays I really like never pick it up. And that is Current Elliott. Current Elliott is a premium denim brand. When I first started reselling, it was a big bolo brand. Current Elliott is a brand owned by the company The Collected, which actually owns two other brands on this list. And they filed for bankruptcy in 2021, which honestly is no surprise to me because the demand for this brand has really gone down over the past few years. So the average sales price for Current Elliott is $30.88, which really isn't that bad, but really the sell-through rate on Current Elliott is so slow. And if you are gonna pick up Current Elliott, I'd recommend picking up the newer label, which I'll put here, versus the older label, which I'll put up here. However, there are a few exceptions to the not picking up rule. First, they've done a collaboration with Hatch, which does really well. Hatch is a maternity brand. Second, overalls by Current Elliott still do really well. Typically, premium denim overalls just do well in general. So even if it's a brand you don't typically pick up, if you find a pair of overalls by them, I'd probably still pick them up. And then leather goods by Current Elliott do well as well. That's true, again, for a lot of premium denim brands that I'm more selective with, but if I find a leather piece, especially if it's something like a high rise leather pant or you know a leather jacket, I would definitely be more inclined to pick it up. Okay, number two on this list, I actually went on my Instagram stories recently when I found this brand and said, I no longer pick this brand up anymore. And that is because it sells so, so, so slow for me. It sits in my closet forever. And that is Outdoor Voices and specifically leggings by Outdoor Voices. I really do not pick them up anymore at all, which is crazy because I used to love, like love finding Outdoor Voices at the thrift store. And I would even buy them at Nordstrom Mac for retail arbitrage and flip them that way. It was just such a bolo brand. However, after doing some research, I did find that there are certain pieces by Outdoor Voices I would definitely still pick up. They do have an average sales price of $30.04, which isn't too bad. And that's really buoyed by their dresses. If you ever find a dress by Outdoor Voices, I'd recommend picking it up. Uh, skorts by Outdoor Voices. And then their more recent pieces, especially their Rec Track pants. Those tend to do really well as well. But when it comes to just their regular old leggings, I would say don't pick them up. I, I really don't anymore, unless they're a really coveted color. But I really couldn't even find that when checking comps on this brand. So. This really does lead me to my third brand on the list, which is a little bit controversial. I mean, all of these, there are very clear exceptions, but this one, I think some people still consider a bolo brand, and that is Allbirds. I used to sell so many Allbirds, I was able to get them brand new for a pretty good price and then flip them on Poshmark so, so fast. That was like back in, I don't know, 2018, 2019. But nowadays, when I come across Allbirds at the thrift store, first of all, they're usually so damaged to the point that I can't really pick them up because I don't want to clean them because they're really not worth the time. They sit and sit and sit. I have one pair in my Poshmark closet that's just been sitting. And then second of all, I don't feel comfortable listing them on eBay. There is a recent controversy with Allbirds and eBay where Allbirds essentially doesn't really want resellers to be selling their goods on eBay. So that's another reason why it's like, okay, I'm definitely limiting the market that I have available to me when selling these. But there are exceptions. If I came across 
tree toppers by Allbirds, which maybe I'll put up a picture of what these different styles look like. I would pick that up. The Tree Dashers by Allbirds, I would pick those up if they were in good condition or excellent condition. And then the flats also do well because they do have an average sales price of $41.74. And I think that is skewed because a lot of these, you know, items that have actually sold recently are the ones that are in high demand. And those typically are tree toppers and the Tree Dashers and they go for pretty good money. But they're kind of signature wool sneakers I very very rarely pick up all of these brands I probably pick up at the bins like if it was a pretty good style and it was in excellent condition but when paying up for items at the thrift store especially since y'all know goodwill prices in Portland are really high I pass okay number four on the list is a designer and there are definitely exceptions to this but the brand is Diane von Furstenberg. First of all, the average sales price of Diane von Furstenberg is $49.35. I think it's the highest on this list. So there are definitely clear exceptions to this rule. Diane von Furstenberg can sell for, you know, upwards of a hundred plus dollars. I'll show you the old tag versus the new tag. Items of the new tag tend to sell better. However, another style that does well by Diane von Furstenberg are just wrap dresses. That's kind of their more signature piece. And so if I find a wrap dress that's silk or just an excellent condition and a print that is desirable, I would check comps and potentially pick it up. But in general, like tops, skirts, and virtually everything else with by Diane von Furstenberg, especially in the older label, I just passed. In fact, last time I was at the thrift store, came across a Diane von Furstenberg skirt, didn't even think about looking it up. And that is because if it does sell, it takes forever to sell. So there's really just not a lot of demand for Diane von Furstenberg on the reseller marketplace unless you find very particular styles or newer styles. Okay, so remember when I said two other brands by The Collected were on this list? Well, those make up number five and number six on this list. Number five is Joie, which when I was starting was a massive bolo brand, but nowadays I very, very, very rarely pick up. Joie has an average sales price of $28.77, which is probably so much lower than it was just like three or four years ago. Joie is really kind of known for silk pieces and they have a really high retail price, like over $200 per piece. Oh, and I should have mentioned this at the front, but all of these average sales prices, I didn't include items that are new with tag or new. I included just items that were, from what I could tell, pre-owned. So if you find an item that is new with tag, you will probably be able to make more than what I'm reporting here as your average sales price. And then I think is true of Joie as well. Uh, joie new with tag pieces that are newer styles are obviously going to do better but the one category within joie that i've found that does pretty well and i would consider checking comps on it if you do find it in this category is dresses especially midi length dresses but they also have newer and older tags this is the old tag i would never consider picking up anything with this older tag and then the newer tag which i'll put up here has been around for a while so just because it has that tag doesn't necessarily mean it's good but that's definitely something that i'm looking for okay and then the next brand is also in the collected company and that is equipment equipment is also known for primarily silk blouses and they were really, really popular for so long. Celebrities loved all three of these brands, Kern Elliott, Joie, Equipment, back, you know, five, seven, ten years ago. But since then, it's just been on a slow and steady decline in terms of demand. So Equipment also retails for a lot of money. It does have a higher average sales price than Joie at $36.74. Up until fairly recently, I was still a big fan of equipment and I would look it up whenever I would find it in the thrift store. But time after time recently, when I've been looking it up, I tend to put it back because just comps don't really look good. And so I've really kind of gotten into the groove of, unless it's an especially cute piece, I don't look up comps or, I will look up comps if it's a dress. It's the same category for joie. If you find a dress by equipment and it looks like a recent style, I definitely say consider checking comps and consider picking it up if comps back up that decision. 
Okay, so the next brand I haven't been picking up for a while. I would consider maybe picking up at the bins, and I think it obviously can sell for a lower price point. I sometimes include it in Moby boxes, but never pay up for it at the thrift store, and that is Cabby. Cabby is part of an MLM, essentially. My mom's friend used to sell Cabby, so we would have Cabby parties at our house. So when I was first reselling, it actually sold pretty well and pretty quickly. Nowadays, I mean, I really rarely ever pick it up, but I wouldn't recommend picking it up or at least paying up for it for y'all unless you get it for pretty cheap. The average sales price is $24.09, which again, like, a lot of businesses are built on that average sales price, so if you get it for cheap enough, it can be fine. But when I'm looking for pieces that will sell for, you know, $40 and upwards, the only thing that I could really tell did well by Cabby was the newer tag jumpsuit. So first of all, let me put up a picture of the newer tag. And again, this tag has been around for a while, so it doesn't mean that it's a really, really new style, just newer than the older tag, which I'll put up here as well. So jumpsuits that have the newer tag, I think I would be willing to pay up for at the thrift store, but otherwise I passing on cabbie. Okay, number eight on this list is a brand that really doesn't exist anymore, but I still come across in the thrift store and I still get DMs about this brand. So the brand is Elizabeth and James, which is Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen's old brand. They also own The Row, which is their much more higher end brand. That is still around, but they dropped Elizabeth and James back in 2019. They entered a licensing agreement with Kohl's, so Kohl's was selling Elizabeth and James, but obviously very different because Elizabeth and James was a higher price point brand. So you definitely don't want to pick up the pieces that were sold at Kohl's, but sometimes you'll come across pieces that did retail for a lot of money and are constructed really well, made of really luxurious fabrics, etc. The average sales price is $37, and there are certain formal wear gowns that do well, and there are certain blazer styles that I think certain people are on the lookout for. Certain buyers love these certain blazer styles, one being Elizabeth the Fourth uh, blazer, and then the other one being the James blazer. I just kind of kept seeing that when I was looking over comps. So if you find a blazer by Elizabeth and James, or you find a long maxi formal dress, I would say potentially look up comps, but otherwise this brand sits for so long, there's really not much of a demand for it. And the average sales price with just a general piece, a typical piece that's not a blazer or a formal gown is not great. So I would generally recommend passing on Elizabeth and James. If you find it at the bins, that might be a different story, but at the thrift store, I'm passing. Okay, number nine is another premium denim brand, and I haven't been picking this brand up for a while, and that is Hudson. I do sometimes sell Hudson through liquidation, but I really don't pick it up at the thrift store. Even new with tags, it doesn't really tend to do all that well. The average sales price is $30.23, so if you find it at the bins, it might be worth picking up, but again, I wouldn't uh, spend too much time considering Hudson at the thrift store. A couple of exceptions is jumpsuits. I found that those were doing really well when checking over comps. And if you do come across Hudson new with tag, I would still consider picking it up, especially if it's a newer style. They can sometimes sell for, you know, 50, 60 bucks or more if it's uh, in demand style. But generally I am passing on Hudson, even though it does retail for a lot of money, there's just really not a lot of demand for it and there's a high supply of it. Okay, so the very last brand on this list is a brand that I think y'all have seen me pass on a number of times, and that is Marc by Marc Jacobs, which is technically a designer. It's a diffusion line of Marc Jacobs, but it used to do really well. When I was first reselling, I would love finding Marc by Marc Jacobs, and it retails for a lot of money. So especially if you're new to reselling, you might come across it in the thrift store and think, wow, this is so great. I gotta pick this up. But it really does not perform well. It sits and sits and sits. It takes forever to sell unless you find a really specific piece. The exception to this is purses. Some Mark by Mark Jacobs purses can do well. Um, and so when we're looking at the average sales price of all categories, it comes out to $45.10. 
but then I went ahead and just included clothes only and it went down to $29.20. So I have a really hard time finding pieces in the thrift store by Mark by Mark J that I'm willing to pick up and I actually pass on it at the bins because the real real doesn't take it. Consignment stores, at least in my area, rarely take it. So there's not really much I can do with it, but I typically tend to pass on it. One exception, of course, would be if I found a leather jacket by Mark by Mark Jacobs. Those can do well, but otherwise the clothing, unless it was super cute, I would pass on. Those are the 10 brands I do not pick up at the thrift store anymore. Let me know in the comments down below if you disagree with any brand on this list and let me know if there are any others that you used to love picking up at the thrift store but now no longer do. I know a lot of these are still kind of on the cusp of being polo brands like Allbirds, some people love finding Allbirds still, Outdoor Voices maybe even, but for me, they've kind of teetered on to the side of I pass way more often than I pick them up. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoy reselling content, Thrift With Me's, we put out a new video every Monday and Thursday. So I will see y'all in the next one. Okay, love y'all. Bye.